I'm Ed Chung. I'm an internal medicine physician, but I also have Meniere's disease. So again, I'm creating this series of videos. There's a whole bunch of them. I think I've got 20 of them now as of January of 2012 um, on YouTube to sort of help other Meniere's disease patients or people um, get maybe a little better understanding um, or, or try to offer some extra help um, understanding Meniere's disease and the different treatment options and what's happening. Um, so today I'm going to actually talk to uh, you guys or everyone about um, gentamicin. I've been holding off um, wanting to talk about gentamicin and gentamicin injections because I personally have not had gentamicin injections. Um, I've, it's been recommended to me um, from two different physicians out of maybe seven I've seen. Um, and I've been sort of reluctant to talk about it because I'm on the fence about the whole treatment process. Not that it doesn't work and not that it's not going to be helpful, but for my situation, in my case, I, I, I don't, I'm trying to avoid any type of permanent destructive procedure, uh, which gentamicin injections are. Um, but the more and more I'm reading about things, the more I'm thinking about things, um, and the more I'm considering things with my, the progression of my Meniere's disease, uh, I am sort of considering mentioned by injection, and the more I think about it, and more I read about it, it they may not be it may not be as as severe or bad as I'm thinking about, um, or as my opinions are, uh, as far as how destructive it is. So let me start it with this: um, gentamicin is an, an an antibiotic. It's a medicine that we give all the time in in, in the hospital, um, and it's only administered intravenously. It does not come in a tablet form. It only comes in a liquid form. Uh, very, very, very potent, very strong antibiotic, works great, still is very relevant. We give it all the time in the hospital as an IV form of it to treat urinary tract infections or abdominal infections or any type of, it's called gram-negative bacteria, such as E. coli or Pseudomonas or any type of, certain type of bacteria, okay? Um, very safe to give, uh, however, it can uh, be damaging to the kidneys and in very, very extremely high doses or for um, prolonged dosing of gentamicin, it can cause deafness and vertigo because it knocks off the inner ear cells. Okay, um, but the ENT physicians have used this side effect of gentamicin to the benefit of Meniere's patients or patients who develop severe inner ear vertigo problems because of their balance centers being off. Okay, um, and what they can do is they can es essentially inject um, gentamicin directly into the inner ear area and what that does is it knocks off your um, little hair cells that are in your balance centers um, and therefore try to remove the signals, the abnormal signals that are being sent from Meniere's disease from the increased pressure. Okay, um, Let me try to explain the physiology or how this, how this works. So again, I've, I've done this in other videos but I'm going to bring this up again. This is your hearing complex. Okay, Your, 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 your outer ear your middle ear and your inner ear. Okay, this is so on the inner ear, your hearing, your hearing and vestibular complex. This is your whole inner ear. This is your hearing center. This is your balance center. They're both connected to your eighth nerve. Okay, and the eighth nerve feeds the brain. You have two of these: one on one side, one on the other side. What the gentamicin does is it specifically targets the hair cells in the inner ear. Okay. And so what happens is in the inner ear, uh, I'm going to bring this up as a sort of a prop. You have to think of, think, think, think of these little tiny little tubes here, okay? These tiny little balance tubes um, as um, like little, little tubes. Like this is like a little level, okay? And in those little tubes, there's a little balance. There's a little balance. So when you tilt your head to the left, the fluid flows to the right. If you tilt your head to the right, the fluid flows, flows to the left, and so you can see the balance going back and forth. Well, as the fluid moves in these little tubes, okay, the, the, the little tubes, the fluid flows through the tubes, it pushes on these hair cells. So inside these, inside the tubes, there's millions and millions and millions of these hair cells. It's not the same hair cells as we have in our face. It's, the, it's these little hair cells. Every single one of these hair cells is attached to a little nerve, okay, a little nerve ending. So you have millions and millions and millions of these little hair cells in these little, little little circular canals, okay? And the balance center, if you look at this picture again, it's broken into three little loops, 
Okay, there's little loops of these balance centers, and they're just the, th the size of this thing is like tiny. It's like the size of a racer head. Okay, less than that. And they're oriented different ways. There's one oriented this way. There's one oriented this way. There's one oriented this way. And just like with the balance and the fluid fluid tube thing, as you tilt your head one way or the other way or forward or backward, okay, the fluid flushes through those those the, the, that tube. It flushes through the tube, so it moves one way or it moves the other way, and that sends the signal to your inner brain on where your your positioning is, wh whether your head's upright or sideways or inverted. Okay, these tiny little hair cells. Again, attached to a nerve, millions and millions of these, hundreds of thousands of these little nerves attached, feed into your eighth cranial nerve, okay, on one side of your brain. And you've, again, you have two of these complexes. So the way the gentamicin works is the gentamicin selectively, for some reason or other, has a tendency to kill off these cells, knocks off all these cells, this destroys them all. Not all of them, but I mean destroys a lot of them. And it does have a, a selective um, predisposition toward the balance centers over the hearing center cells. Don't, don't ask me why. It probably has to do with something of the way the, fi the fineness of the cells or the, the, of the way the cells are made and um, the sensitivity it is to the gentamicin, okay? Um, so, I guess, the, moving on, um, after six months of Meniere's disease, if you haven't gone to remission, okay, you, you probably have a more chronic disease. And the gentamicin injections, again, are more selective for the balance vestibular centers versus the hearing and cochlear centers, okay? They knock off all these cells in the semicircular canal, the vestibular semicircular canal. Um, and what that does is, with Meniere's disease, you have increased high, 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 high pressures, okay? You have high pressures in the, um, the, the balance centers. And what that does is, that when it sends abnormal signals, you get vertigo, you get dizzy, you don't feel good. When you knock off these cells, there's less signal being sent to your brain, and with less signal, you should have less side effects or less less symptoms. Okay. Um, Gentamicin injection has approximately about an eighty percent success rate after about three to four weekly injections. So they inject your ear once a week for about three weeks to four weeks. Sometimes uh, the ENT people will go up to like five, six, six times. Okay, if there's no success and you're not getting controlled with the vertigo after that, then you have to say that the gentamice injections uh, are sort of a failure. It didn't work for you, okay? One thing is that you're gonna have to expect if you do, the, do get the gentamice injections that your vertigo may get worse for a week or two. Uh, and the reason is is that these cells, you, you're killing off the nerve. You're killing off the nerve, or killing off the complex of the nerve, the cells, hair cells feeding the nerve. When you kill off those cells, they're going to send off aberrant or irregular abnormal signals. And those abnormal signals, just like in Muses, when there's too much pressure and it's sending irregular signals, those abnormal signals will make you, cause you to have more vertigo or more symptoms or not feel well. Okay. Um, you have to realize that gentamicin is a destructive procedure. Okay. It will knock off the cells and once you knock them off, it's permanent. That's it. Okay. Uh, there's about a 10 to 20 percent, if you look at all the literature and what ENT people are saying, about a 10 to 20 percent risk of hearing loss, okay? Um, and you also have to understand that if you you give the gentamice injection in one ear, you knock out one side of your ear, your, your, one side of your brain's hearing complex, okay? And what happens is that once you knock off one side, the other side, your other ear balance center, which is supposedly normal or good, will take over its function and help with your balance and help with everything. That's fine and all good. However, you have to realize that that Meniere's is sort of a systemic disease and there's probably a 10 to 20 percent, or sorry, a 25 to 30 percent chance of uh, bilateral Meniere's. If you look at one of my prior videos, I did talk about incidents of bilateral Meniere's. And um, that's sort of why I'm like holding off on, and I'm worried about trying to do a gentamice injections because I'm really, really worried about having Meniere's on the other ear. I do get tinnitus, and even right now, I've got my hearing aid in right now. Um, in one ear, I still have tinnitus and ringing in the other ear. And I'm, I'm a little worried that, that I'm going to progress to that. And if I knock off one side, then I only have one side to, to rely on. And if the other side gets affected, then I'm really, really in trouble. So 
What I'm going to leave you with is that you have to ask yourself these questions, okay, before you go for a gentamicin injection. I'm not saying don't do it. They, they may be a, a god sent cure, and they may help you, and, and, I, and I may eventually go for them, but you have to ask yourself these questions. Number one, how often is your vertigo? Number two, how severe is the vertigo? Number three, how long have you had Meniere's disease? If you've only had Meniere's disease for a couple months, you know, you still have a pretty decent chance or odds of, of maybe going to a remission and, and getting better and then having some years free of this. So why knock off the cells and cause a, a, do a, a, a permanent procedure when um, you can try to avoid that and save that for later when you really need it? So number four, how bothered are you by your vertigo? I mean, I'm pretty bothered by my vertigo, but however, at the same time, I'm able to function, I'm able to work, I'm able to, to drive when I don't have the vertigo and, and, and do most of the things I want to do. So even though I'm very bothered by the vertigo and it can be very severe and I'm, I'm out for an hour or two hours, I can get the meds under, uh, take the meds, get it under control, and then at least try to live a, a somewhat normal life. So how bothered are you by your vertigo? Number five, although relatively low, you have to, have to ask yourself, would you risk some hearing loss to stop the vertigo? Again, 10, 20% chance hearing loss, worsening deafness on that same side. Um, and then the last thing, number six is have you tried all other interventions first before going to a permanent 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 ablative procedure I mean you have to realize this is a permanent procedure and it will knock off those cells on one side so as with anything else especially in medicine okay there's a risk benefit ratio I mean you take antibiotics you take um, cold medicine you take anything there's a risk to it a risk may be very very small and the benefit may be very big then you do it. But if the risk is, is pretty high and the benefit is about the same, you gotta balance the two and think about which one's worse, okay? Um, and with all things, there's a subjective component to it. That's why I brought up these six questions. Think of it, think about it, ask yourself that. And if, it's, and if you're looking at yourself and saying, look, I cannot live another day with this vertigo, I cannot take it anymore, then by all means, go for that, go for that injection, go for that procedure. Okay, um, I'm going to put a couple other links below as far as other things, uh, other videos that I created um, and, um, and also a link to like the procedure itself. I found a nice one on YouTube. So good luck. Um, hope this tries to help you decide uh, some of the treatment options for Meniere's disease. Um, and this one, this particular video I'm talking about again was about gentamicin injection and gentamicin. Okay, thanks.